that I've never seen is this, uh, you know, this crowded before, this many people here, and we've been voting here for years. A refreshing change for poll workers dealing with long lines at their precincts. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to our special coverage of Decision 98. You know, voters are deciding a lot of races today, some very important decisions being made. We will get you the numbers just as quickly as they come in tonight. We're going to be bringing you live results and live reports as well in the race between Scotty Basler and Jim Bunning for the U.S. Senate. Also, of course, big races in the U.S. House of Representatives. We'll show you who will be leading Lexington for the next four years and who will serve under that person. Plus results from other key races all around the bluegrass. And analysts say interesting and local races bring out the voters. Well, people were at the polls today and apparently many of you found these races interesting because there are 2.6 million registered voters right here in Kentucky and projections from the Secretary of State's office are out right now. Moderate to heavy turnout in this election. Our Tim Gordon has more on this year's high turnout. If more than a million people vote, Kentucky will set a new record high for a midterm election. Inside the Chevy Chase Baptist Church, it looks like it could happen. It's been like this nonstop. People in, in the door all the time. Since first thing? Since first thing, there were actually people waiting for us. All this commotion is actually making election workers happy and the voters too, even if it's inconvenient. I mean, I think it's very important to vote, but it's like, we have jobs that we have to be at, you know, and so I hope our bosses are understanding because everybody else in line has to be at work right now too. But amidst the wall of people with shifting feet waiting to vote on an especially long ballot is an overriding feeling that it's worth it in the end. Well, I'd like to have a little say, and I want my people to be in there and represent me. Isn't that what we're doing this far? We sure hope it is. In Lexington, Tim Gordon, 18 Action News. And Fayette County Clerk Don Blevins told us earlier today that he wouldn't be surprised if about 80,000 voters turned out of the roughly 150,000 registered to vote. And of course, that is right here in Fayette County alone. Now, the race that has attracted the most national attention is the battle for U.S. Senate. The winner is going to take over a seat that's been held for the last 25 years by Mr. Democrat himself, Wendell Ford. Linda Wager is at the election night headquarters of one of the men vying for that privilege, Democrat Scotty Basler. Tom, you know, the crowds are just starting to come in, but the hats are ready, and Scotty Basler has got all of his hats looking like this with sunflowers, the trademark Scotty Basler sunflower that he's been using to campaign for quite a while. Now, Scotty Basler himself is not here. He's home home watching the returns on television, but he was out earlier today doing some last-minute campaigning. <coughs> This Scott County country store was one of about a half dozen Basler visited. The country store circuit is a tradition with Basler, who won his first election 25 years ago. In Congress, we cover a lot of country stores, so I think I've always been doing that for years, and you always try to keep something going that when you won by it, so you don't want to change it. That's why I go out to do the Holiday Inn South. That's why I do the country stores. Mm. Of course, we're here at the Holiday Inn South, like Bazaar was mentioning, the place he's been every time he's won and also two times when he was a loser. But this is a man that's used to being a winner, but he's got to be nervous tonight because this is a neck-and-neck -neck race. Back to you, Tom. All right, Linda, we'll be checking back with you. Thank you very much. You know, if Basler does not win tonight, it's going to be the first time in Ken that Kentucky has had two Republican U.S. Senators in 30 years. And one man hoping that does happen is Congressman Jim Bunning. So let's go live to his headquarters in Florence. Nancy Lynn Trenum is there live tonight. Nancy Lynn? Well, it's pretty quiet up here right now, but I'm sure things will pick up in the next hour or so as more Bunning supporters arrive. Jim Bunning himself is not here right now. He's not expected to show up until after the results are in. And when he does come to the party, that will be his second political engagement of the, year, of the evening. His first was this morning when he voted. Uh, I'd like to go home and do, I've got to hair, uh, get a haircut and do a lot of other things. Right. Do you have your identification? After months of campaigning, Bunning took it easy today. His only political engagement all day was voting. Up here earlier this morning. Have you voted? His staff was hard at work getting out the vote and helping people statewide get out to vote. The Bunning campaign was pleasantly surprised with voters. This afternoon, some counties reported 50 and 60 percent voter turnout. Political director Scott Douglas attributes those numbers to local issues. Issues that hit close to home drive people to go out and vote. Uh, 
sweeping national issues don't seem to motivate people as much as something that hits a little closer to home. Tom and Melanie, there's a lot at stake with this campaign, which costs both candidates about $25 million. Back to you. And Republican Mitch McConnell is hoping that Bunning will be there by his side in Washington. We'll have to watch and see what happens tonight. Thank you, Nancy Lynn. And another close race is for the 6th District House seat. It's pitting two candidates at different ends of the political spectrum against each other. Liberal Democrat Ernesto Scorsoni and conservative Republican Ernie Fletcher. This morning, Mr. Ernesto Scorsoni got a few handshakes in right before he voted at the Preston Inn on West 2nd Street. Meantime, Republican Ernie Fletcher also cast his vote over at the Cave Mill Precinct. That is in the Public Library branch at Beaumont. Now, along with all the latest numbers, we're going to keep you up to date on the close calls as well. Give you an in-depth look at some of the key races. Nancy Cox has more on that tonight. Well, Tom, we are logged on via the Internet right into the Secretary of State's office. So we are going to be able to tell you and uh, track those votes just as they come in. And that's going to allow us to analyze the Senate race by district. If we can take a look at that map right now, we're going to be breaking down the votes as they come in by district. Of course, Scotty Basler hopes to be a shoe-in in his home district in the 6th. And Bunning should sweep his district in northern Kentucky, the 4th. But how these other districts are going to go right now? anybody's guess. It's certainly going to be interesting to watch and we'll break it all down for you. We'll also look at that 6th District Congressional race. Both candidates are from Fayette County and that's where 50 percent of the voters live, but how will they run in the other 18 counties? We'll show you that. But of course districts and counties don't elect congressmen and senators. People do. That's why these candidates need to win in their home areas and win big. All right, Nancy, we'll check back with you. Thank you. And the most hotly contested race right here in Fayette County, a lot of people watching it, is for Lexington Mayor. Pam Miller, of course, is trying to overcome a challenge by Council Member at Large Chuck Ellinger. John Wesley Brett is at the Miller headquarters. John? Well, Tom, this is, of course, a contest that has been hotly contested, but at least for this one, it had a little sportsmanship air to it. Miller today started the day as she has for the last couple of days, awfully early, getting out to uh, vote this morning. Every sitting mayor uh, since the uh, beginning of the urban county government has won re-election, and she's hoping to continue that tradition. After voting this morning, I asked her if she was confident about uh, her chances tonight. She said, well, we'll let the voters decide that, but she is awfully hopeful. The party is just getting underway here at the uh, Radisson in downtown uh, Lexington, and uh, we expect Mayor Miller around here about uh, 7 o'clock or so, Tom. All right, John, thank you. Sure. And the mood is equally intense over at the Ellinger camp tonight. Tracy Cornett is there with some insight into the other side of this race for Lexington Mayor. Tracy? I tell you, it doesn't seem intense right now. It's pretty uh, fun and lighthearted, to be perfectly honest. The band is cranking behind me. We've got a great crowd. Dr. Ellinger has not yet arrived, but let's talk a little about this guy, Dr. Ellinger. You'd think he has enough on his plate already as a member of the Urban County Council, a professor at the UK School of Dentistry, a landowner, a restaurant owner, and of course a father, a husband, and a grandfather. But uh, he wants to add another title to that tonight, Mayor of Lexington. And he hit the road early this morning trying to get it. Ellinger and his wife Janet cast their ballots around 7 this morning at Beaumont Presbyterian Church. Ellinger said he was thrilled to see the turnout, and then he was optimistic about the outcome today, but that didn't stop him from meeting and greeting all day long, and I have to tell you, I ran by him at Triangle Park out there waving, trying to wrestle his last few votes, so we'll see what happens tonight, and we'll see you guys in about 30 minutes. Okay, thank you, Tracy. We might mention that uh, Dr. Ellinger says if he wins, he will retire from UK dentistry, so see what happens there. You know, right now we're going to run down because we have a few, uh, thank you, Tracy, we have one of the election uh, numbers in one of the precincts right now. And these are statewide results in the U.S. Senate race, again, pitting the top two candidates in this one, Democrat Scotty Basler, Republican Jim Bunning. Obviously, the poll's just closing, so the numbers slow to trickle in, but as soon as we get them, we want to pass them on to you. And right now, with just 1% of the precincts reporting across the state of Kentucky in the U.S. Senate race, Scotty Basler leads Jim Bunning with 57% of the vote to 43%. We're also going to be breaking down this race just in Fayette County as well. The Reform Party candidate, no percentage at this point. Again, that's with 1% of the precincts reporting. And you know, it was a pretty good day weather-wise. little drizzle this morning to get out and go vote. That's right. Stuart Shepard is here with the rest of our forecast.
That's right. We do have a few showers moving across Kentucky at this time. Most of the rain has stayed north of the state this evening, but we've got a few patches of very light precipitation. You can see it moving uh, just south of Campbellsville over toward Somerset. Some other showers west of Danville at this time. These are very light, so we'll call it patchy drizzle as you head out for the evening hours. Mostly cloudy skies will continue in the overnight with that drizzle coming down on occasion, about enough to make you flip the wipers on. 40 degrees as you head out, so you definitely want to coat this evening. We've got uh, almost winter weather coming up in the extended outlook, and uh, we'll show you some of the coldest nights we've seen for a while coming up in just a few. Tom, Melanie? All right, Stuart, thank you very much. Earlier we talked about some of the other races that we're going to be watching for you over the bluegrass, not just here in Lexington, but throughout central and eastern Kentucky. And for that, we want to check in with Tim Gordon, who is in our newsroom tonight. That's right, Tom. We have got a lot of races, of course, all over central Kentucky, and we don't want you and your community to miss out on anything tonight. So first of all, let's go ahead and take a quick canvas around. Of course, it's a little early for results, but let's show you what we'll be looking at. Mercer County Sheriff is... Uh, one of the hot races, you know, Mike Lyons is a Democratic write-in for slain officer and uh, former candidate Regina Nichols. She, he is uh, her son-in-law, and he'll be a, a write-in candidate against another Democrat, Ralph Anderson. He's the incumbent. Now, that's two Democrats running in a non-primary. That's rather unusual. In Pulaski County, we want to let you know that Sam Catron, who won the uh, coin-flipped primary and then had that overturned with Kenneth Stringer and then got it through the uh, Republican uh, Party leader's vote, if that's not confusing enough, is running against Jim Rutherford. What's not confusing is that Pulaski County is heavily Republican, and the hard part may be over for Sam Catron, but we'll wait for results. In Versailles, incumbent Charles Reed has held the office for 12 years. Now, a first-term councilman, Fred Seaman, is running a tough race, apparently, against Charles Reed. That's what we've heard from the folks in Versailles, so we'll see about that one. Also, the Georgetown mayor's race, the outgoing mayor, Warren Powers, will be out. Of course, he... Uh, uh, withstood quite a bit of controversy. Now John Fitch and Everett Varney are going against each other, a local druggist and a local high school or middle school principal actually. So we'll see uh, who the winner is out of those races and bringing a lot of other regional races as well, Tom, coming up. Yeah, a lot of interest and that's been reflected with the voter turnout today. Tim, thank you much. And now it's about uh, 14 minutes after 6. The polls closed at 6. We're starting to get the numbers. They're coming in. We're bringing them to you as quickly as possible. Right now we're going to take a, a look at what we do have. U.S. Senate race in Fayette County only. 1% reporting. Basler 54% and Bunning 45%. We have the U.S. House, Fayette County only, 1% reporting. Ernesto uh, Scorsoni, 45%. Fletcher's actually out on top, the Republican, with 55%. That's only 1% reporting. We have the Lexington Mayor's race, 1% reporting. Chuck Ellinger on top, 58% of the incumbent. Pam Miller, 42%. Also in the Urban County Council at large race, there are six people running. The top three vote getters will go on and become at large members, and the top vote getter of those will be the vice mayor. And then this is with 1% of the precincts reporting as you see those numbers scroll through. That is going to be a race that we will watch closely throughout the evening, see who those top three vote getters are. And a number of council positions up for grabs tonight. We'll have those as well. And believe it or not, there were other things going on today than just the election. Yeah, there's another important decision in the works. This one in a high-profile murder case going on here in Lexington. We're going to tell you the latest in the case of an attorney accused of killing his client's husband. And we will continue to bring you complete results of today's voting, so stay with us. Wednesday. He's charming, he's hot, and most of all, he's sexy. Year after year, we all want to know just who is the sexiest man alive. I'm Jane Pauley. Join me for a Dateline People Magazine exclusive at 8, 7 Central, NBC Wednesday. Decision 98 is brought to you by The Lane Report, covering the business of the Commonwealth from border to border. For the best of everything. Let's go Kroger Ring, you can always count on us. Let's go Kroger Ring, Kroger Ring, Let's go Kroger Ring, you can always count on us. Save $5 off any hen turkey or $10 off any tom turkey. Whole bone-in pork loin is $1.19 a pound and assorted Kroger gallon milk is $1.29. You can always count on us. This is singing Bob saying, Hey, I'm home. Hey, I'm home. Dad. Guess whose ranch got a new heat pump today? Singing Bob. So when you go back, I could go to and ride a stress through our spot? Whoa, 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 son. I won't be going back to singing Bob's for a long, long time. Singing Bob bought a train. 
Call Benton's Heating and Cooling for details on Train's free 10-year extended warranty. Closed captioning is brought to you by Kroger. You can always count on us. Go Krogering. If you're going to get to first base, get to first base. If you're going to get a deal, get a deal. Hardy's Big Deluxe Burger, now for just 99 cents every day. A great burger at a really great price, just 99 cents. If you're going to go, go all out. Don't miss your Chevy dealers non-stop. Blacktop. Coast. To coast. Save the most. Sales event. You'll save the most right now on the 89 Chevys. Got my Malibu. Now get your Malibu for 1.9 financing. Or lease your Malibu for just $2.29 a month. Save big! So get to your local Chevrolet dealer now for their non-stop blacktop coast-to-coast save the most sales event. Act fast! Won't laugh! The fate of a Harlan attorney accused of murdering his client's husband is now in the hands of a jury. The case against Robert Thomas went to the jury about 12.30 this afternoon. Karen Acar takes us to the courtroom now for the closing arguments. Robert Thomas sat stone-faced as his attorney tried to establish doubt. Not one person has ever seen him in possession of a gun. Ken Smith spent an hour pointing out what the prosecution didn't have and refuting all the other evidence against his client. Harlan attorney Robert Thomas is accused of murdering George Budgick at this Lexington home. He's also accused of trying to murder his client Jerima Budgick to cover up years of legal malpractice. It came very close to being the perfect murder. Very close. And the only thing that stopped it was the fact that he bungled this job, just like he bungled the case in the first place. Jerima Budgick managed to get away, and her husband George lived long enough to tell paramedics Robert Thomas shot him during the struggle. Ultimately, a jury will have to decide whether it was an accident or if Thomas is guilty of murder. In Lexington, Karen Acar, 18 Action News. If Thomas is convicted of murder, he could get life in prison. Repair crews are hard at work here in Lexington, relighting 400 pilot lights by hand. Columbia Gas says construction workers hit a gas line here on Appian Way this afternoon. Well, that left 400 households without gas, including residents of Park Place Apartments. So as the customers come home, we have a number of servicemen working over in this area. And as they come back, if they're in a the section that we have purged, they'll light them up just as soon as they can. If you've got any questions, you can call Columbia Gas at the number on your screen, 288-0205. And a boiler breakdown is forcing a Versailles school to close its doors for the rest of the week. St. Leo School will be closed Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday while crews fix the boiler. Now, parent-teacher conference scheduled for this week, well, they are also canceled. Right now, we want to get back to our election results here on Decision 98. Let's take a quick look at some more numbers that are coming in. You see in the U.S. Senate, this is Fayette County only, not really a big surprise. 5% reporting, Basler. Uh, Lexington native from Athens, 61% to Bunning, 38%. And Arbogast, 1%. That's 5% reporting. In the U.S., Fayette County only. This is the U.S. House. 6% uh, reporting there. Scorsoni, 53%. And Fletcher, 47%. And Krogdahl, that's Wasley Krogdahl, 1% there. And more results are coming up. Also, we're going to see if the weather kept people from the polls. Stewart's forecast coming up next. Today's weather did not fare well with the folks I talked to in line while voting, so tomorrow we're going to do something completely different for our children. Forecast is next. The NBC Spotlight Show of the Week. Law and Order. 
If we need to find him, we can just follow the trail of blood and bones. This crime just won't end. We'll torture and kill another woman and another and another. I want a stop of two at This outcome you can't anticipate. I don't like where this seems to be going. The name, mother of God. This DA says no more. You killed all those women, and now a woman is going to return the favor. You can't kill me, I won't let you. Try and stop me. A special all-new Law & Order NBC Wednesday. Hey, we'll be back with some more music eventually, but first let me tell you about something you don't know, but hey, I do, and that's what's important. It's a gadget that will make your floor shine and taste great, too. Yes, you won't believe it. It's safe. K-93, Kentucky's from best country. The country, country music you love from the country. people you know. And that's why, my friends, we are Kentucky's best country, K-93. <laughs> Still the one, the original for yet another generation. Kentucky's best country, K-93. We want a Dodge Intrepid to be so powerful, so nimble, so sleek and so slippery that it would fairly scream, drive me. Car and driver must have heard it because they drove. Then they named Intrepid one of the best. Dodge Intrepid. We're changing everything again. Get a well-equipped Intrepid for $20,495. Margaret White on carpet, and why she cleans it with Stanley Steamer. I have two careers. One's at the office, the other starts the minute I get home. So I need a carpet cleaner that knows that my time's worth far more than money. Some carpet cleaners keep you waiting, but Stanley Steamer schedules arrival times at your convenience. They're on time, and they're a pleasure to have in your home. Stanley Steamer makes you feel right at home. Call today for this great... What would you expect to pay for an Arby's sub? $6.95. Would you believe any two subs for just four bucks? No, no way. Honest, any two for four bucks. We want to get back to some results right now. In the Lexington mayor's race, we have 11% of the precincts reporting in this race so far, which was expected to be tight, and the numbers are bearing that out. Now 12% of the precincts reporting. Incumbent Pam Miller leads Chuck Ellinger 53 to 47% of the vote. That is expected to be a tight race throughout the evening. Folks got out and voted this morning, and, you know, there wasn't a big rain shower or anything. A little cool, yeah. little misty. Cool and gray are the two main words for today, and it's the beginning of some cool weather for the rest of the week. Temperatures are going to be a bit on the chilly side. We've been waiting for fall and winter to really get here. Well, they're here, uh, starting with tonight. Right now in central Kentucky, it is still gray. A little bit of drizzle out there on occasion. Current temperature, 40 degrees, 96 percent humidity under those cloudy skies. Patches of drizzle here and there showing up on the radar. Winds for the northeast at 7. Today's high temperature was... 47, and that was all we could muster this afternoon. Temperatures hardly got out of the low 40s with the thick cloud cover. 41, the morning low. Six hundredths of an inch of precipitation today, although it seems to be raining quite a bit. It's all very light, at least in Fayette County, so the uh, total's not adding up to a whole lot. Radar view shows what's left of those patches of showers. Most of the rain now up to our north across Ohio and Indiana and back into Illinois, but a few patches here and there are light rain, and other than that, just some drizzle. Too light to show up even on the radar tonight. The low pressure center that brought that is moving off the east coast. With that, the showers will die down tonight. In its place, very cool northern air and partly cloudy skies will settle in. Daytime highs tomorrow still just in the 40s across the state, and it's going to be cool all the way up to the weekend. Another quick note, just uh, to mention it, Mitch is uh, strengthening back up again down in the uh, Bay of Campeche, down in the southern part of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, they're now calling this a minimal tropical storm again, and Mitch, uh, if the prevailing winds push him the right direction, will be headed right for Florida to maybe bringing some rain there in a couple of days. So we'll keep an eye on Mitch. Forecast for tonight, low temperature down to 35. Pat, uh, patchy drizzle continuing under mostly cloudy skies. Tomorrow, the high just up in the upper 40s again. A little more sunshine, though, which will make it a tad more comfortable. And the extended outlook shows temperatures staying in the 40s for highs all the way through Saturday. And morning lows from Thursday through Saturday expected to be below freezing. So uh, this is a real snap of cold weather to get us in the mood for Thanksgiving coming <laughs> yeah. up shortly. Just in time. Thanks, Thanks Stuart. Stuart. Well, this is a contest that's not decided by you, the voter, but by basketball players. True Blue fans are going to get their first taste of the defending national chance as the Cats take the court for their first exhibition game of the season tonight in Rupp. And the political season comes to a close and we're bringing you the results of races that affect your life. One of the toughest decisions a family can make is to put a loved one in a nursing home. You pay for and should expect loving professional care. I'm Gary Becker. You know my firm, the Becker Law Office. 
If a loved one has experienced injuries or neglect in a nursing home, talk to us. I've handled cases like yours for over 30 years. We can help, and it won't cost you a cent unless we win or settle your case. Call today. Meet me where it always feels like summertime. The swing on Wilson's Pond or Nicky's Five and Dan. The good times that you're craving are just around the bend. Meet me at the Dairy Queen, where the feeling never ends. Meet me at DQ. Come in and meet me for breakfast. Start your morning with a hearty twin pack of sausage biscuits for just 99 cents. Come on to that feeling and meet me at DQ. I don't really think I've been to a school that taught you sign language. And I think that's very important. I was an anchor once and we introduced the show and we talked about the pledge. It's sort of like watching the regular news unless it, they sort of just tell you what day it is and stuff. They have something called Pet Corner. It's when maybe someone brings a pet and they share it with the whole school on television. You work weekends. You sweat the details. And it's paying off. Your business is growing. But you're busy. You don't have time to worry about expanding and relocating or dealing with contracts and negotiations. Outsource your commercial real estate needs to Lane Consultants. Let the Lane professionals coordinate your real estate transactions, giving you time to run your business. Lane Consultants, creating real estate transactions of value. 18 Action Sports is brought to you by Aurora Pools and Spas. It's not only election day, but it is the start of the UK basketball season, which some might say is even bigger. That's just very true. You know, it's a big day in the election world, and Tubby Smith, want to pay attention, has got some very good thoughts about how to, you know, convey basketball with today being election Never. day. So, it's the moment True Blue fans have been waiting for: the opening of the basketball season. Tonight at Rupp Arena, the Cats host the California All-Stars in their first exhibition game of the season. The California team has some, some familiar names on it, like former Louisville stars B.J. Flynn and Damian Danzler, and former UCLA stars Charles O'Bannon and Jelani McCoy. Some guys freshman Tayshawn Prince is familiar with. Mostly, I know mostly all of them. I mean, everybody actually, but I haven't really played against them. You ever played against them, you know, playground ball, summertime, or anything like that? Yeah, you know, little pickup games and here and there. Unlike coaches Rick Pitino and Denny Crum, Tubby Smith wanted to stay out of the political arena on this election day. Senate candidate. What's up? Somebody running for Senate? No. <laughs> all right, well, all right, just get out and vote. All I can say is just go cash your vote. That one vote does count. <laughs> there you go, doing his part for Election Day. What's well, the Super Bowl, World Series, Final Four, Stanley Cup of horse racing? It's the Breeders' Cup, and it's now only four days away. But there will be a horse missing from the mile. Today, during a workout at Churchill Downs, subordination broke both sesamoids in his left front leg. The injury ends the four-year-old's racing career, but according to doctors, the break is not life-threatening if he pulls through surgery. Subordination is owned in part by Gainesway Farm on Paris Pike. And you can catch all of the exciting Breeders' Cup action right here on Channel 18 this weekend. NBC's coverage of the Breeders' Cup begins at 1 o'clock. Highlights of the Cats in California tonight at 11. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Well, we're still bringing you the best election coverage in town. Decision 98 continues in a moment. Life looks even better at Goodies, the store for wall-to-wall -wall selection of brand new, brand name clothing. It's Goodies Family Clothing, where you get all this at low prices that please the pocket. Brands, selection, and savings too. That's all you need to take a good look at Goodies. Take a good look. Goodies looks good on you. stop someone's hiccups. <clears throat> stop someone's hiccups. Thank you, dear. If you're gonna get a deal, get a deal. Two Hardy's Bacon, Egg, and Cheese Biscuits for only two dollars. Two made-from-scratch biscuit breakfasts. Just two dollars at Hardy. If you're gonna go, go all out. I think 
Children are not small adults. They have different emotional and physical needs. That's why the University of Kentucky Children's Hospital has over 300 professionals dedicated solely to children. Because when it comes to health care, one size does not fit all. UK Children's Hospital. We treat your children like our own. been here for probably 30, 40 minutes and I just want to make sure my boss knows that I'm really in line waiting to vote and not playing hooky. Long lines this election day give some workers a little unexpected time off and give candidates more votes than they've been counting on. And good evening, everyone. I'm Melanie Glasscock. And I'm Tom Kenny. Thanks for staying with us for our second half hour of special election coverage. Of course, a lot of important races decided by a lot of voters today. That's right. Turnout was higher than most political watchers were expecting. Some voters waited in line, as you just heard, for about an hour to cast their ballots. Right now we want to take a look at some of the races that those ballots are deciding, so many of them so close. In the U.S. Senate race in Fayette County only, with 32% of the precincts reporting, Scotty Basler leads Jim Bunning. 57% to 42% of the vote. In the U.S. House race, Fayette County only, 32% of the precincts reporting. Democrat Ernesto Scorsoni leads Ernie Fletcher, 53 to 46%. In the Urban County Council at large race, with 32% of the precincts reporting, remember the top three vote getters go right now. Isabel Yates and Scott Crosby are the top vote getters with 22% of the vote, followed by David Stevens with 17% of the vote, followed closely though, as you saw, by Gary McComas with 16%. And taking a quick look at all the different district seats, the first district, Urban County Council with 82% reporting, we have George Brown and 18 Action News has basically um, called him a winner at this point, 76% of the vote to Stratton's 24%. In the 4th District, Urban County Council, 21% reporting. We have Stumbo with 51% and Gordon with 49%. In the 7th District, we have Willie Fogel, 66%, and Capley with 34%. Uh, That's 11% reporting. And the Lexington Mayor's Race, boy, this one's a close one. 36% reporting, Pam Miller, 52%, and Chuck Ellinger with 40%. 8%, and we'll keep you up to date on all those numbers. Well, while the Lexington mayor's race is considered to have been one of the cleanest of the year, ironically, storm sewers is the issue that seems to have whipped up the interest in this one. And our John Wesley Brett has followed it all along. He joins us from the Radisson, where Mayor Pam Miller is probably watching the results right about now, right, John? That's right, Melody. She's upstairs uh, watching it. She came down just a few moments ago to say uh, hi to everyone and then to, uh, retired back upstairs to watch the returns come in, and they're looking awfully good for the Miller campaign. And Deborah Hensley, who was co chair of that campaign is joining us right now a third of the boat in and you're we're excited we are pumped uh, we uh, we push this woman to the limit in terms of her energy level but just like her tenure on uh, being our mayor she's got an incredible amount of energy and uh, we're going for it so confident at this point. we are very confident all right thank you very much Deborah. thank you Deborah Hensley co-chairman of the Miller campaign and uh, as we said earlier, uh, Mayor Miller is expected to uh, back down here in the ballroom of the Radisson Plaza at 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, win or lose, we'll bring it to you live. Tom? It's a close one. Thank you there, John. All right. Tom? Pam Miller's challenger for mayor, Councilmember Chuck Ellinger, also waiting things out. Right now he has 48% of the vote. Tracy Cornett at his headquarters tonight, the Campbell House Inn, joins us with the latest from there. Well, Tom, their smiles over there at the Miller camp are our looks of indifference over here at um, the Ellinger campaign headquarters. People are gathered around the monitors. It's like an up and down roller coaster of emotions as soon as these uh, results are in. At the beginning, of course, 1% was reporting, and, and Ellinger was ahead, and things are getting a little shaky, but this is Phyllis Mossman. She has coordinated all of the volunteers for this campaign. First of all, how do you feel tonight? 
I just think it's been a privilege to be a part of something this important to Lexington. You've done a major job. This is her first election, everybody. And uh, do you feel it's been a worthwhile experience yes. for you, win or lose? I would never trade it. It's okay. been the, one of the best experiences of my life. Okay, well, thank you so much. We'll see you in a little bit. And uh, guys, we're just waiting and hoping, and uh, we'll get back to you with the latest when it happens, when Mr. Ellinger appears. All right, thank Doctor. you, Tracy. Sure. And another campaign where commercials have been dominating our television sets is the race for the U.S. Senate seat. Right now, we're going to take a look at those results, um, or the numbers that are in right now. 43% reporting the U.S. Senate race. Basler, 56%, and Bunning, 43%. That's just 43% reporting. Linda Wager is at the headquarters of Democrat Scotty Basler. She joins us now on the latest on that race. Linda. Hi, Melanie. Yeah, Basler expects to do well in central Kentucky. I think he might be a little bit concerned about some of the res these results that are coming in. It shows him in the lead in Fayette County, but it doesn't show him with as strong as a lead as I'm sure he was hoping to get. Now, he expects to do poorly in northern Kentucky. Of course, that's Jim Bunning's home territory. And he says the deciding factors in this race are going to be Louisville and far western Kentucky. Louisville might go toward Bunning because it's cosmopolitan, and Bunning comes from, of course, a cosmopolitan area. Western Kentucky is predominantly agriculture role and they may very well identify with Bowser who is a tobacco farmer but of course it's way too early to tell and we'll be here all evening and we'll bring you the latest back to you okay thank you Linda and we might mention that Scotty Basler has been campaigning for this seat for more than a year and no one wants to lose when you've put that much work into it of course the man who wants that seat just as badly as Scotty Basler is Republican Jim Bunning Nancy Lynn Trinum is live by satellite in Florence at the Bunning headquarters Nancy Lynn well, it's still pretty quiet up here. It's starting to pick up a little bit. Jim Bunning is still not here. He's not expected to be here until all of the results are in. And he took the day off from campaigning today, opting rather to run errands and get a haircut. Bunning voted early this morning, about 10, his only political engagement of the day. Meantime, his staff was hard at work answering voters' questions and helping people statewide get to the polls. The Bunning camp was pleasantly surprised with early reports of voter turnout, showing some counties with 50 and 60 percent of the registered voters going to the polls. Political director Scott Douglas attributes those numbers to local issues. Uh, issues that hit close to home drive people to go out and vote. Uh, sweeping national issues don't seem to motivate people as much as something that hits a little closer to home. Now we have heard of two statewide exit polls, one showing Basler Head and one showing the race still too close to call. Much like the polls we saw throughout the campaign. Nancy Lynn, thank you. And mentioning the numbers, let's go back right now because that's what you want to see tonight, the results. Right now we're looking at the numbers in the U.S. House 1st District seat. The Democrat Barlow, 60% to Whitfield's 40%. That's 1% reporting. The U.S. House 2nd District, 1% reporting. Evans with 51% and Ron Lewis with 48%. And the U.S. House 3rd District. And zero per, well, we'll go into the next one. How about U.S. House, the 4th District, with 1% reporting. We have Lucas with 66% and Williams with 34%. In the U.S. House, 5th District, Eastern and Southeastern Kentucky, not a surprise here. Incumbent Hal Rogers with a huge lead over Sidney Jane Bailey Bamer with 3% of the precincts reporting. Rogers with 83% of the vote. In the U.S. House, 6th District, again, only 1% of the precincts reporting. Democrat Ernesto Scorsoni leads Republican Ernie Fletcher, 57% of the vote to 42% of the vote. And of course, the 6th District encompassing 19 counties. It'll be interesting to see how they do outside of Fayette. Fayette County, right, because they both live here. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, the weather cooperated for the most part with voters going to the polls today. Yep. Not too bad. A little damp, a little chill but no excuse to stay home. Stuart Shepard's full forecast coming up after a look at NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw at the top of the hour. I'm Tom Brokaw tonight on NBC Nightly News. Power and politics. Who will be king of the hill? Stakes are high for both parties and especially the president. Join me in the nation for complete coverage seen tonight here on NBC Nightly News. I'd probably pay upwards of 450 or so. What would you pay for an Arby's? $6.95. Would you believe any two subs for just four bucks? Nah. No, no way. For this much meat in a sub, I would have expected to be a lot more. Honest, any two for just four bucks. For all that you get in this sandwich, that is a great price. They'll put everybody else out of business. <laughs> you can go anywhere and get filled up, but you can only get the two subs for $4 deal at Arby's. I'm glad you're dead. 
You were not so hot. I knew better than to mess with your kind. But I was talked into it. You were a bad choice. The atmosphere in our home, it was always so chilly. And you never, ever gave me any real warmth. <gasps> Goodbye and good riddance. When your electric heat pump dies, replace it with a warm heat of natural gas. You'll never regret it. Yes. It's the natural choice. <gasps> Closed captioning is brought to you by Kroger. You can always count on us. Go Krogering. When it suddenly occurs to you that you only bells where you need it. Hello. Hi, sweet. Six months. Bell South Mobility. Life's calling. Why wait? Don't miss your Chevy dealers. Non-stop. Blacktop. Coast. To coast. Save the most. Sales event. The biggest cashback offers in Chevy history. The 99 Cavalier and get 750 cash back. Or get your Cavalier for 1.9 financing. 1.9! So get to your local Chevy dealer now for their non-stop blacktop coast-to-coast save the most sales event. Act fast! Won't laugh! Get a special offer to sample Bella Note's stellar new menu when you visit the WLEX website. Leave the day behind at Bella Note. 18 Storm Team Weather is brought to you by Jeep Eagle. We're just not used to it, but I tell you what, it almost felt more like winter at times today than fall. It really did. Temperatures only got up into the 40s for highs today. It's been a very gray day all the way around, and the lack of sunshine made that 40-some degrees feel colder than it even was. Right now it is 40 degrees under cloudy skies. Some drizzle around the state. Our high temperature today only in the upper 40s, and the morning low was only in the 40s. It's been a day all day long in the 40s. Let's take a look at that high and low here, shall we? 47 and 41. As far as rainfall today, we've gotten six hundredths of an inch here in uh, central Kentucky and still some patches of drizzle out there right now. Around the state, the radar view shows most of the rain up to our north, but a patch or two of very light showers moving through the southernmost portions of the state. A uh, patch just north of Danville, between Danville and Harrodsburg. A couple others southwest of Somerset. Uh, this drizzly, patchy, showery kind of stuff will continue this evening and overnight. Temperatures, though, on the cool side, ranging from 39 in Covington to 52 in Somerset. The low pressure center that's bringing us what rain we're getting is moving on off to the east and in its wake we'll see cool air drift in more sunshine tomorrow though that'll make it a tad cooler uh, or more comfortable rather even with the cool temperatures just in the upper 40s and a quick mention mitch has turned back into a tropical storm back down in the uh, bay of campeche could be bringing rain to florida in a couple of days forecast tonight for here expect the low temperature down to 35 with patchy drizzle tomorrow still in the 40s 49 under partly sunny skies the extended outlook shows the 40s very popular will be below freezing though thursday through saturday mornings so the first real cold weather stretch is looking at us right now. Well, we got at least to it a little bit today. Thanks, Stuart. Slap in the face, right? It hurts. Okay. We're going to take a quick look at Lexington's mayor's race because that gap is tightening up with 64% reporting. We have Pam Miller, 51%, and Chuck Ellinger with 49%. And we're just talking like three, 400 votes there. Very, so very tight race as expected. Well, adults weren't the only ones voting today. That's right. We're going to show you how children can influence an election by casting their ballots next. Decision 98 is brought to you by The Lane Report, covering the business of the Commonwealth from border to border. Rockabilly Cafe. It's all about cool kids. Cool kids with 50s fun and fabulous food. At Rockabilly Cafe, kids are the star of the show. Now it's time for mom and dad to take the stage. Get involved with your children's school and their schoolwork. Help your kid become a rising star. And after you've completed your rising star pledge form, you'll get a coupon book. Then you guessed it, back to Rockabilly Cafe, where everyone can be a kid and you can be the star of the show. Emma, your biscuits are always so light and flaky. How do you do it? Well, a lot of people ask me that. White Lily is made from only soft winter wheat. Other flowers make globs of gas imprisoning gluten, imprisoned gases, flat biscuits. But White Lily bakes up light, fluffy. White Lily, the light big flower. Well, I better have another one then. 
there's a lot more to transportation than just getting from point A to point B. Before you ride these, these, are these. Someone's got to make these. Seaports, airports, subways, someone has to build them all from the ground up. Before you ride this, someone's got to make this and this and this. But when it comes to getting from A to B, there is one company that makes everything from A to Z. So for this, 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 are this, are this. We're Siemens. We can do that. Dodge Ram was the first and is still the only full-size pickup to be ranked most appealing by J.D. Power & Associates. It was the first to offer a 10-cylinder engine, and it was the first quad cab. And now, for the first time, we're offering $1,000 back on the truck that changed the rules. But hurry, this is one first that won't last. $1,000 cash back on 98 Rams ends November 9th. The NBC Spotlight Show of the Week, Law and Order. If we need to find him, we can just trail of blood and bones. This crime just... ...kill another woman and another and another... I want to stop him too, Eddie. This outcome you can't anticipate. I don't like where this seems to be going. The name, Mother of God. This DA says no more. You killed all those women, and now a woman is going to return the favor. You can't kill me, I won't let you. Try and stop... A special all-new Law and Order, NBC Wednesday. You know, we have some big national races at stake today also. That's right, because control of Congress is up in the air, because Republicans have a pretty fragile hold on both the House and Senate. But several key races could determine everything from the future of controversial legislation to the future of President Clinton. Jim Hanchett has more from the Capitol. Bill Clinton's name is not on the ballot anywhere today, but his problems and his policies are very much on the minds of some voters, including one voter, one elderly voter from California. Minnie Mims is 107, and she's voting. Across the country, poll watchers say, in a few states, turnout is sky high, but in most places you'd spell it L-O-W. Not surprising, because there's no presidential race to pull in voters. President Clinton says that's no reason to stay home. There are an unusual number of exceedingly close races. Incumbent Democrats in struggles include Wisconsin's Feingold, Illinois' Mosley Brown, South Carolina's Hollings, and California's boxer. Republican senators in tough fights include North Carolina's Faircloth and New York's D'Amato. The challenger there, Charles Schumer, speaks for most politicians on this day. Say your prayer, say your prayer. Republicans have a 10-seat hold on the Senate, a 22-seat grip on the House. They control the legislative process, and this year, they control the impeachment process. House Speaker Newt Gingrich, voting in Georgia, predicts Republicans will strengthen their hold on the Capitol, but analysts say the balance of power won't be dramatically altered. At the state capitals, the Republican Bush brothers, Jeb in Florida, and George in Texas, figure to win. Another famous son, Hubert Humphrey III, may lose in Minnesota, where his rivals include former professional wrestler Jesse Ventura. So, you're thinking of skipping it all? Listen to Miss Mims. Well, I think they're all out of vote. I don't care what they do, what's going on. This is the last national election of this century, but don't look for the politicians and the political ads to vanish. The candidates for the year 2000 presidential election are right now warming up on the sideline. Jim Hanchett, NBC News, Washington. And more on the national elections coming up straight ahead on the NBC National News. You know, they say good habits start young, and kids all across Kentucky spent this election day getting in the habit of voting. You know, it helps kids realize that their opinions matter, but also helps convince their parents to go to the polls. Photojournalist Dave Browning takes a look at the underage voter turnout this election day. Hi, are you ready to vote? I think it's important so that they can find out what kids think about these things. Okay, you need to sign your name here. The reason that we have to vote is so we we'll have good people that will take care of our country and city. Okay, now let me show you the voting ballot. It made me feel like I had a choice and, I, and that I was responsible for a part of who was elected. Now you can mark your ballot. Yeah, I think it's important so that they can find out what kids think about these things and so in case like kids think different than their parents so just to compare the results okay now that you're finished you just put it into the ballot box okay I thought it was pretty neat great grown-ups get the right to vote it's neat that we get to vote too 
And poll workers at the Pite Size Precinct say turnout among kids was also higher this year as it has been with the adults. Lexington's Mayor Pam Miller got a political wake-up call when she came in second in the May primary. Did she answer? Well, right now, with 76% of the precincts reporting in the race, she still holds a slim lead over challenger Chuck Ellinger. Pam Miller has 51% of the vote to Ellinger's 49%. And we'll be right back. Stay with us. Kroger and TWA offer you the chance to fly for less. Just bring in Kroger receipts totaling $100. And you'll get a travel certificate good for great savings on TWA fares for travel in the continental U.S. <laughs> savings that so Want to take your taste for great fast food in a different direction? You ought to drive into Sonic. Where you can add chili to just about anything. From chili cheeseburgers to chili cheese fries. Or right now, get our Coney and Tot special. An extra long cheese coney topped with chili and tangy cheddar cheese. Plus a side of crispy tater tots for just $2.49. At Sonic, where the spice of life is right at your fingertips. Hi, welcome to Sonic. Drive in for a change this month and get our cheddar peppers for just 99 cents. Barney Miller's, the latest in audio, video, home theater, DVD. Competitive prices, free warranty and delivery. Barney Miller's, always on top of what's next. Barney Miller's, Kentucky's most complete selection of Panasonic and Sony. The most impressive display of home theater. Central Kentucky's largest audio video service facility all right downtown. Barney Miller's, smart buy. Of course, affordable dentures improve smiles, but more importantly, they improve lives. Because new dentures not only renew confidence in your appearance, but you'll eat better. And that can have a real impact on your overall health. Our dentures are made right here in this office, in our own lab. You don't even have to make an appointment. New dentures at affordable prices. Call 1-800-DENTURE for information. Right away, you'll see a real improvement. You can't afford a pool table. Lexington Billiard has pool tables starting at $12.95. Old House in Sheraton, just $15.95. Tables in stock, free delivery, Lexington Billiard, New Circle Road by Parkette. 18 Action Sports is brought to you by All Sports, Fayette Mall and Lexington Mall. Ask the pros at All Sports. Have a news tip? Call the 18 Action News tip line at 259-1818. Or from a Bell South Mobility cellular phone, touch star 1818. The polls in the Eastern Time Zone have been closed almost an hour now, so we have more numbers that continue to come in. We're going to take a look at some of those right now here on Decision 98. In the U.S. Senate race, Fayette County only, with 82% of the precincts reporting, as expected, Democrat Scotty Basler holding on to his home turf, leading Jim Bunning with 55% of the vote. Remember, Fayette County only. In the U.S. House race, also Fayette County only, 82% of the precincts reporting. This can't get much tighter. Democrat Ernesto Scorsoni barely leading Republican Ernie Fletcher 50 to 49%. In the Urban County Council at Large race, Isabel Yates with 23% of the vote, Scott Crosby with 22% of the vote, and David Stevens with 17%. The top three vote getters go. That is with 82% of the precincts reporting. We want to check in with Nancy Cox now, who has an interesting job that's really going to help you get some insight into Decision 98 by tracking some of the trends. Nancy? Yes, Tom, and as they are trickling in, it's interesting to see how these votes are laying out across the state. Let's take a look at the statewide map broken down into congressional districts for the U.S. Senate race. As it looks right now, Scotty Basler should be cheering, but we want to point out that only a small percentage of the votes are in, and of course, Western Kentucky, only some of the absentee ballots coming in. But look at this. In the 4th District, in Bunnings District, Scotty Basler is actually ahead right now. But look at the 3rd in Louisville. That's not reporting anything at this moment, so that is certainly key. And in the U.S. 6th District congressional seat, of course, Scorsoni and Fletcher both being from Fayette County. We knew it would be tight right now. Scorsoni is ahead there. But look at some of the outlying counties that we have numbers on right now. Ernie Fletcher is winning in those counties. However, it is very tight. So uh, this will continue to tell an interesting story as this night goes on. Yeah, we're going to check back with you. Thank you, Nancy. And we'll be right back with a last look at election results. So don't go away.
central Kentucky man says his prison term for drunk driving should be dropped because of a technicality. The deputy who arrested him is a convicted felon. The deputy committed the crime 26 years ago and thought his record was clear. You be the judge Wednesday on 18 Action News at 6. If you're going to get to first base, get to first base. If you're going to get a deal, get a deal. Hardy's Big Deluxe Burger, now for just 99 cents every day. A great burger at a really great price, just 99 cents. If you're going to go, go all out. The American Medical Association says that over one million injuries occur each year due to medical malpractice. Yet less than 10% of the people injured ever knew their injuries might have been prevented. I'm Gary Becker. You know my firm, the Becker Law Office. I've handled medical malpractice cases for over 30 years. If you think you might be a victim of malpractice, talk to us. We can help, and it costs you nothing unless we win or settle your case. Call us today. When you're looking for brand name tires at a great low price, there's a place just around the corner where you can save both time and money. Walmart's Tire & Lube Express. With quality tires like BF Goodrich, Michelin, and Goodyear. And the Deluxe Lube & Oil Service with Pennzoil or Quaker State. All at Walmart's everyday low prices. So while we're doing this, we can do this. And while we're doing this, I'm going to do this. Walmart's Tire & Lube Express. Saving time and money is just around the corner. If Dr. Huffman can transform Pinocchio's wooden grin into this real-life one, if his state-of-the-art technology can reshape Jaws' mouth to this friendly one, if his orthodontic artistry can turn Mona Lisa's smirk into a work of art, imagine how he can change your kids' problem teeth into smiles like these. And brace yourself, no payment up front, and only $98 a month to get your child and you a movie star smile. <laughs> Call Dr. Huffman in private practice at 1-800-BRACES-4. What would you expect to pay for an Arby's sub? $6.95. Would you believe any two subs for just four bucks? No, no way. Honest, any two for four bucks. Time's running out! Historic deals on the 98 or 99 Chevy during your Chevy dealer's non-stop blacktop coast-to-coast save the most sales event. Act fast! Won't laugh! The only way you'll hear that game live is right here on 59 WVLK. You heard that first here on News Radio 59 WVLK. WVLK says it for Lexington. Well, Mother Nature threw a cold blanket around Kentucky today, <laughs> Stuart Shepard. Certainly did. A big gray blanket that's been up above our heads all day long. And that gray blanket of clouds is also bringing a few patches of drizzle across the state this evening. Uh, maybe not enough to carry your umbrella, but enough to make you flip the wiper on once in a while. We're headed for cooler temperatures, that's for sure. Right now across Kentucky, the temperature hovering around 40 most locations. And for tomorrow, high temperatures won't get out of the 40s. Tonight's forecast, low temperature uh, down to about 35 with some patchy drizzle, mostly cloudy tonight. Then tomorrow the sunshine comes back, but the cool temperatures stay with us. Only 49 for a high. In the extended outlook, temperatures go below freezing every night from Thursday through Saturday. And afternoon highs will be in the 40s up to the weekend. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Stuart. I'm going to take one last look at these numbers before we go on to our 730 uh, special. The mayor's election, 92 percent reporting. Pam Miller, 51% to Chuck Ellinger's 49. She's been holding on to that. Urban County Council at large, these have been called. Isabel Yates, 23%. Scott Crosby, 22%. That's with 89% reporting. And David Stevens, 17%. There are at large candidates. And we also have uh, Brown, 76%. That one, he has won that one to Stratton, 24%. In the Urban County Council, 4th District, we right now are calling Linda Gorton, the winner over Barry Stumbo. That's with 100% of the precincts reporting. And incumbent Willie Fogle will hold on to his seat in the Urban County Council, 7th District. And Sandy Schaefer, also an incumbent, holds on to her seat in the 10th District with a win there. All right, thanks for watching. NBC Nightly News coming up next, but we're going to bring you continuous race results across the bottom of your screen during Nightly News and throughout our primetime programming. So please join us at 7.30 for our election special and a complete wrap-up on 18 Action News at 11. The NBC Nightly News is up next. They'll have all the national numbers there. Good night, everyone.